Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new avatar generator, and this is by far the most realistic and highest fidelity model I have seen yet. Before we go into the details, let me just play you some of their sample clips. So here, the person on the left, this is the real video. And then you can see it's turning her into these three different avatars. And look how realistic all three of these avatars look, even with these extreme expressions. So here's another example. Here, the person in the middle is the real video. And you can see it's translating his face into these two avatars to the left and right. And again, even with all these tricky expressions, those avatars are very realistic. Here's another example. You can see these expressions are very tricky, but the avatar is able to handle it just fine. So here are some examples comparing their method with previous methods. So the video on the far right is the real video. This is the ground truth. And then to the left of that, this is their method. This is the new method. And then the two to the left of that, those are just older methods, which are less accurate and less realistic. So you can see it even handles teeth very accurately. If you've watched my previous video on Microsoft's Vasa 1, which is another avatar animator, or Alibaba's Emote Portrait Live, they can do a pretty good job, but the biggest noticeable flaw is the teeth of the person. Here I'm showing an example of an avatar from Microsoft's Vasa 1, and you can see the teeth just keep changing in shape and it's not temporally consistent. However, in this example, you can see it even preserves like the shape of each tooth in the original avatar. So you can see like here is the canine and here is the canine. Whereas all previous methods, they just kind of guess what the teeth would look like. So it's not as high fidelity as this new method. And then here, look at the resolution of the hair. Just super accurate compared to previous methods, which are a lot blurrier. Here's another example of a person doing quite difficult expressions. And you can see once again, it preserves the teeth quite accurately. There are some flaws with this, but overall, this is a much better reenactment than previous methods. You can see, for example, for this second one here, it somehow adds teeth in the wrong places. And then the first one here, it's just, it's just not really accurate. So this new method is just very impressive. You can see here, it captures the wrinkles almost exactly like it would appear in real life. So again, to clarify, this model here is completely fake. This is AI. It's trying to turn his face right here into the avatar. But you can see it captures the location and the shapes of the wrinkles almost exactly as what it would look like in real life. Again, just very impressive. You can see the previous methods don't even come close. Here is yet another example. If you look at the edges around her hair, you can see that this is just very high resolution, very accurate, whereas all the other ones, the hair is just very blurry around the edges. Again, here are just some close-up examples of her eye and her teeth, and you can see very accurate, very sharp. It's really hard to tell that this is just a digital avatar. Now, maybe you don't want to turn yourself into your own digital avatar and animate that. What if you want to turn yourself into a cute girl or a cute guy? Well, that's definitely possible as well. So here are some examples. So you can see the video on the left now is the real video, and now it's converting this guy into another person. And then the video on the far right, this is their newest method. And then the two videos in the center, those are older methods. You can see it has lower resolution, it has lower fidelity, it's less realistic. Especially with the second one, the hair seems to morph into these weird shapes. So it's definitely not consistent. But their method, the one on the far right, it's just really good. Here's another demonstration. And the nice thing is this preserves the facial expressions of the avatar. And then here's another demonstration. You can see the whole avatar is just a 3D model in a sense. So you can move this across all three dimensions. And again, the video on the left, this is the real person. And then it's translating her face into these three different avatars. Just very impressive. And I can't find any flaws with this. If you can point out any noticeable flaws with these avatars, let me know in the comments below.
But I think with this technology, it's just going to get increasingly hard to distinguish, you know, a digital avatar versus a real person in an online video. All right, so let's go into the details of how they built this, how this actually works, and how you can use it. So when I first saw this demo, it actually reminded me of Apple Vision Pro's avatar, where basically you get Apple Vision Pro to scan your face at multiple angles, and then it would create a realistic, or so they claim, digital avatar of you, which you can use in online calls, for example. However, those avatars are not great, to say the least. It's just very blurry, not high fidelity. Sometimes it just doesn't look like the real person at all. So I would say, you know, the Apple Vision Pro's avatar is barely usable. You can see here the edges are just super blurry. This is not high fidelity. But then fast forward to today, we have this, which at least to me, it's almost indistinguishable from the real person. So they did do an explainer video. It's quite technical, so I'm going to play you select sections from it and then explain it in simpler terms. We present NPGA, Neural Parametric Gaussian Avatars, for high fidelity and controllable avatar creation from multi-view video data. Our core idea is to leverage the rich expression space and deformation prior of neural parametric head models in combination with efficient rendering of 3D Gaussian splatting. Our avatars consist of a canonical Gaussian point cloud with latent features attached to each primitive, as visualized here. We show animation results from a driving facial performance, demonstrating accurate expression transfer even under extreme expressions. All right, so there are a ton of technical terms already in like the first few seconds of this person talking. So let's go over what she actually means for the layman. So first, she mentions Neuroparametric Head Model, or NPHM. These are basically advanced models used to represent and animate digital avatars. They use the power of neural networks to capture a wide range of facial shapes and expressions in a realistic way. So as you may know, the neural network is the backbone behind all the AI that we know today, including GPT, Stable Diffusion, Sora, etc. And these are computational models inspired by the human brain. So that covers the neural part of the neural parametric head model. Now, what exactly is parametric? So basically, this model represents the head and its expressions using parameters. This can include various attributes like shape, position, expression, etc. And this allows the model to generate a wide range of expressions and facial configurations. So in a nutshell, a neural parametric head model, it's just an advanced model used to animate a digital avatar. For all experiments, we use high-quality multi-view video as training data, which contains diverse subjects performing challenging expressions. All right, so this is a key sentence here. They used high-quality multi-view video as training data. So in order to generate an avatar, you need to film this person at multiple angles doing some crazy expressions in order to create a digital representation of her. This is very different from Alibaba's Emote Portrait Live, which can take a single photo and animate that photo. Same thing with Vasa 1. All it needs is one single image, and it can use AI to animate that image. But here, you need to take multiple videos of this person at multiple angles doing various expressions before you can train a realistic digital avatar of that person. So that is a challenge. If you want to just generate a cute girl from Stable Diffusion and turn yourself into her, using that one photo, it's not going to work with this method. Next, we show the result of model-based tracking using the Mono NPHM model. Our goal is to leverage Mono NPHM's geometrically accurate expression prior to build high-quality 3D head avatars. However, Mono NPHM's expressions are modeled using a backward deformation field, warping points from post space into canonical space. Since rasterization is a forward rendering approach, we propose a simple cycle consistency objective to obtain a forward deformation field compatible with 3D Gaussian splatting. Neural parametric Gaussian avatars are represented using a canonical Gaussian point cloud, which is forward warped into post space using our dynamics module. All right, so yet another sentence just full of very technical terminology. You know, sometimes I wish these scientists can just speak regular English <laughs> so that we normal people can understand what on earth they're talking about. But anyways, she mentions a technique called 3D Gaussian splatting. This allows for faster and more flexible rendering of 3D avatars using points in space instead of a traditional 3D model. So really the key here of this 3D Gaussian splatting 
is that it uses points instead of meshes. So traditional 3D models are made up of meshes, as you can see here. These can be quite complex and computationally expensive to render. Now Gaussian splatting uses something different, thanks to a sponsor, Abacus AI. Their platform Chat LLM is an awesome way to use different LLMs all in one place. This includes the newest GPT-40, Meta's Llama 3, Anthropic's Claude Opus, and more. Not only can you chat with it like a regular chatbot, but you can also upload PDF documents and have the AI analyze them. Simply ask questions about the content and get detailed, accurate responses. You can also create custom AI agents designed to perform specific tasks, whether it's automating customer support, generating reports, or any other function, your custom AI agent will handle it with precision. And collaboration is made easy with Chat LLM. You can invite team members to join the same chat thread, ensuring everyone is on the same page and can contribute to the chat. Moreover, Chat LLM integrates seamlessly with various enterprise platforms such as Slack, Teams, and more, so you can incorporate AI into your existing workflows without any hassle. Experience the power and versatility of Chat LLM by Abacus AI today. Try it for free via the link in the description below. Now back to the video. So these models use a collection of points, also known as Gaussians, that describe the shape and texture of the object, as you can see here. Each point is associated with a Gaussian function, which defines the size and influence. So think of each Gaussian or each point as just a small blurry dot that contributes to the overall appearance of the object. And when you render this avatar, the system calculates the combined effect of all these Gaussians or all these points. And this is much quicker than processing a complex mesh from a traditional 3D model because this requires fewer calculations. To increase the overall dynamic capacity of our avatars, we attach per Gaussian laden features to each primitive, which lifts the input of our dynamics module to a high dimensional space that allows for more accurate representation of face movements. Finally, we can efficiently render our avatars using vanilla 3D Gaussian splatting on the deformed point cloud. Yet another super technical sentence, so let's break that down. The key here is that she mentioned that they attached per Gaussian latent features into the avatar. So what exactly is a per Gaussian latent feature? So like I said, this avatar is basically a cloud of points, and each point is called a Gaussian. And then a latent feature means that each of these points has additional hidden information attached to it. These features contain data about how that point should move or change with different facial expressions. So why this is important is because adding these latent features to each point in this facial cloud enables the model to better understand and simulate how the face should move and behave. And this increases the overall realism and accuracy of the avatar. This is what gives it such detailed and accurate facial expressions. And then finally, she said she rendered the avatar using vanilla 3D Gaussian splatting on the deformed point cloud. All this is saying is after these two methods are done, the final step is to render or display the avatar. And this is done using a method called 3D Gaussian splatting, which is just a quick and flexible way to render 3D objects. We now show our experimental results, starting with self-reenactment. Here, we compare against two recent methods, Gaussian avatars and Gaussian head avatar. All methods are trained on 15 views, using all sequences except for the held out test sequence, shown here. All right, so this part is relatively easy to understand. I just want to explain this term self-reenactment. This just means using your face to animate a digital avatar of yourself. So you're reenacting yourself. And then these two videos to the left are just previous models. This is their newer model, which you can see is more realistic and more accurate and higher quality. Next, we show cross reenactment results by transferring tracked expression codes from a driving sequence to our avatars. Compared to self reenactment, the findings of our cross reenactments are similar, indicating that all methods preserve disentanglement between identity and expression. And then the opposite of self reenactment is cross reenactment. This is using yourself to animate the avatar of a different person. In an ablation study, we show that per Gaussian features help to obtain sharp avatars but result in artifacts under extreme expression. Our proposed Laplacian smoothness, as well as a screen space CNN, help to eliminate such artifacts. 
All right, so finally, she mentioned this ablation study. So an ablation study is just a method to test the importance of different components in this model by removing or modifying them and then observing the results. And what they found is with these per Gaussian features, again, these features are additional information in each point of this facial cloud, although they make the avatar more detailed and sharp and more realistic, sometimes it can create unwanted distortions or errors when the person makes very extreme expressions. Especially the teeth here, you can see the teeth are all messed up in this extreme example. So to fix these errors, the researchers overlaid additional algorithms on top of this. So they added smoothing plus a type of image processing neural network called ScreenSpace CNN to remove these errors in the teeth. If you click into their paper, they give more information on what it can do and how long it takes to train and process. So it says here, while we do not focus on efficient training, animation, or rendering of avatars, we acknowledge the importance of fast animation and rendering. In our unoptimized implementation, we can render images at 31 frames per second for 550 by 802 pixels and 18 frames per second at 1100 by 1604 on an NVIDIA RTX 3080. And this includes deformation, rendering, and CNN. And again, this last step is where you remove artifacts and deformations. If you omit this last CNN step, then the speed increases to 43 and 38 frames per second. So this is not bad. Like, this is a consumer-grade graphics card, right? This is not like an H100 or anything like that. So a person with a decent level graphics card could potentially carry this out on their own computer. And then here they say we train all our avatars and baselines until convergence, which roughly takes 30 hours for their method. So hopefully that gives you a sense of how long this would take and how much compute it would take to run this. Now you're probably wondering, this looks cool and all that, but can I try it right now? So the bad news is they do have a GitHub page, but it says code coming soon. And if you click on this button, it actually does not take you anywhere, at least at the time of this recording. So we'll have to wait for this technology to come out. As with the other tools, we just don't have access to them yet. But from this new demo, you can just see how fast this technology is improving and evolving. Just a month ago, Microsoft released their VASA 1, which can take a single image and animate it and make this person say anything you want. And that was already like mind blowing. It was super impressive. I mean, just think a year ago, we did not have this technology. This is already very impressive. But then people started trying to, you know, find flaws with this model. And the biggest flaw is the inconsistency with their teeth. But then fast forward a month, we now have this model, which can very accurately recreate that person's teeth and it's very consistent same with the eyes same with the wrinkles it's like really hard to find any flaws with this new model now i do want to caveat this by saying mpga is very different from microsoft's vasa one right or alibaba's emote portrait live this only takes in one single image whereas this mpga you need multiple videos filming multiple angles of that person doing these tricky expressions so if you want to turn yourself into someone else, well, you're going to need that data from that other person. But if you want to recreate yourself, then it becomes very easy, right? You just need to film yourself using your phone at multiple angles. But anyways, that sums up how MPGA works. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. Do you think this technology would eventually be applied to like Zoom calls or Microsoft Teams? In other words, we don't really need to show our real face in online meetings and instead we'll just use these digital avatars of ourselves. Do you think these avatars will be used in like augmented or virtual reality or the metaverse? And of course, do you see this technology potentially being used for scams and fraudulent activity? Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, remember to like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for more content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.